are you challenged by? Are you challenged by people's perceptions of you? Like, I mean, I can't imagine you are, but does, does, does sometimes it's like, yo, you know what? If you cur- if a girl can't be identifiably herself, then what can she do? What's the what's the f-ing problem, guys? Do you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> this is quite an interesting subject because you know I I, I'm t- I do read comments about myself. Not always. Can't always be bothered, but I do sometimes read comments what people say, and I don't honestly can tell you that I don't care. I really don't care what people say about me. And I've always been like that from like the drama base arena of forum days and dogs and acid forum days. But you, you know, there's a lot of haters and jealous people out there. But I've, I've got to tell you people, I don't care. The Killer Keller b- 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 podcast. Killer Keller official dot com. <laughs> you need the television app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central London or as central as what? Central as you need to be. Big shout out to the irregulars and the sharers and carers, you know what it is. For those of you who've got a television app, free download, iPhone, Android for your street culture sports. We've got mixes, hold tight DJ Mills, hold tight Menace, hold tight Vic, hold tight Maya, inside the place. Yeah, we got it all, mini docs and all, free download, you know what it is. Inside the house today, my friends, a long-standing acquaintance, friend of mine, which I have seen come through the ranks in almost like unison to my career. I've been so lucky to watch her growth in, uh, in not only the Nani Shakers, not not only as a DJ, not only as a figurehead, a pioneering female in the uh, in the genre of drum and bass, but also garage. Uh, not to fail to mention the holograms and all of the exploits with Empire Radio and more. Charlotte D- D- Devaney, inside the house. Devaney, Devaney. <laughs> Don't you get getting that wrong? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> How are you, girl? I'm good, thank you very much. It's lovely to see you. Good to see you too. I feel like it's been long, but we see each other on the grid. This mm. is the new wave, but there were certainly other times and other means and other... I think the, like, the first time I ever saw you was like 20... 20... 20... 20, 20 2003. It had to be Miami. <clears throat> Yeah, Miami WMC. Yeah, so this was early doors. I remember you and a whole host of uh, (laughs) scantily wearing attractive ladies jumping on stage and doing the ultimate best in showcase performing with the drum bass. Talk to me about that time. God, where do I start? First of all, it was a very magical time. It was a magical time mm-hmm. in music and in my life, actually. Um, so Nani Shaker started in 2001. Um, and, you know, we, we we came about at a time where there wasn't really many females in the, the scene at all. Mm-hmm. In bass music, in in any kind of music, really. There was like a few female DJs, one or two. But, you know, we were... <laughs> We didn't care. I still don't care. But we didn't care. We really <laughs> didn't that. care back then. Like we were we were crazy. You yeah. know, we were four we started off as four ravers. Um we were going to all the raves together and just got going mental, like on the on the dance floor for hours and picked up the name the Nani Shakers by Mark from Rat Pack actually. Really? He named us, yeah. See there's some history for Yeah, you, yeah. Man. He named Big us because one night we were at Moondance at, at Camden Palace and we were there, like we used to go out. Um, this was the original four piece. We, we used to go out in all the same outfits with high heels like this big. And, you know, we used to just go mental on the dance floor. We're doing the splits, be like, they're like just having it and singing like Ali G and Borat anthem. Well, Borat wasn't even around then. Ali G, ride the punani and all this, just going mental. And Mark was like, one night he was just like, look, it's the Nani Shakers. Wow. And he just said it. And it was like, wow, that's a good name. And yeah. it just stuck. Yeah. And then, like, we um, we started getting trained up by um, the TNT dancers manager, who at the time were doing, like, all the One Nations and all of those big raves at the time. Um, R.I.P. to Terry, because she's actually passed away now. But she... Um, yeah, peace. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. Really sad. But, um, yeah, she was an amazing dancer. Amazing, amazing. And, and yeah, she, she kind of turned us into a, you know, choreographed professional outfit if you like and mm. she got us our first gigs like first ever gig 2001 valentine's one nation 
you know, so long time ago, man. You know, wow. big shout out to Terry Turbo. I actually saw him the other day. Big up Terry Turbo. Yeah, man, got to love Dawn, Terry. Absolute yeah. legend. Um, he actually had a. Uh, he actually made a documentary about right, One Nation, on and I was on it, yeah. yeah. And then he made one, the, um, which I went to a couple of weeks ago, uh, about Garage, about um, history of Garage from Garage Nation. Mm -hmm. So I went to the premiere and stuff, but he's he's doing big things there. Uh, so respect to Terry. Yeah, so yeah. he gave us our first job. Oh, oh, God, we were crazy. Like, I'm crazy now, right? You know, people might watch my videos and music videos and DJ sets and whatever. She's, she's nuts. But trust me, it comes from a place of absolute, it's just natural. <laughs> it's not like put on or nothing, yeah? Because it, it no, comes it really from isn't. a place <laughs> of natural madness. Because, yeah. you know, back then, going back to the nine chicks, back then, we didn't give a shit. You were really we on like 13 the whole time. I, I just remember like, there wasn't a moment where... I don't know, it, it never felt forced. It felt like never. you were just on like Red Bull the whole fucking time. Well, it's like that now, isn't it? People are like, <laughs> she must be on bad drugs. I see all the comments online. People are like, she's on drugs, she's on. This is why I'm on. Mm -hmm. Either ginger beer or beer. Sprite. That's yeah. it. That's it. I can't even take caffeine. He said to me when I got in here, like, do you yeah. want a cup of tea? I'm like, no, no, no. Just not I can't have caffeine. Can you imagine? Can you imagine <laughs> Charlotte with the caffeine in her? It's like, <laughs> but. It was um, <laughs> it was a time yeah when you could be yourself. Yeah. Like you, you didn't have to worry about upsetting anyone mm. or mm. being too PC or mm. ugh, anything. We we were unapologetically not scared of our sexuality. We didn't give a shit at all. We mm. just wanted the world to know, especially me. Mm -hmm. We were the nanny shakers, and we that's it. That's and there matters. was no social media. So how do we show everybody who he was? We we went out there and we were just bigger and bolder and better than everybody else. Yeah. And like I used to tell everyone, I used to get on the stage and go up to Ragga Twins and Skibber and that and be like, yeah, yeah, we're the Narnie Shakers. And they'd be like, what? You do what? Who? <laughs> okay. And then they started making up songs about it. And that's how we got known. Because like they used to sing, they used to have songs about it. And the yeah. name was just... It was just insane. You wouldn't get away with it now. But that, that's the but. thing. Like, what, yeah, no, you wouldn't. But, um, but you know, th that to have them verse you. But it was on, on flyers. Bars. You know, yeah. they, they used to have the name on the every flyer. But like, I just think the world's gone so PC now that mm. I just don't think you'd get away from no. it. But also to have you have them bar in your name on you know they'd have on mixtapes, which then circulated yeah. on a more audio level. Everywhere, and, yeah, yeah. It's and like, that was yeah, it. Yeah. And that was how we got out there. You know, it was we had T-shirts with our name on. You know. I would correct every MC when I came on stage. I'd be like, yeah, we're not just dancers. We're the Narnie Shakers. Uh -huh. so, so it just stuck. Brand. It was all a brand. Day. I was all about branding. Yeah. Even back then, you know, I was about branding. And I've, I was always about unity as well with the females, which I'm still about now. You know, I don't, mm. I, I like, I feel like there's not enough of that now. We'll get into that. That's mm. for sure. Because there's a lot of projects that you're under at the moment. Yeah, like, like I'm, yeah. I'm all about bringing the girls together and, and supporting each other in this massively, still massively male dominated mm. scene and space of music. Um, but yeah, back then I was setting that trend from 01. Mm. That's it. You know, I've always been about the girls and bringing, bringing us together and and just showcasing everybody's talent, basically. So sick. So, yeah. so where does this come from? So let's talk about the early days. Let's talk about early Charlotte, mm. beginnings. Where, where are you from originally? What's the what's the heritage? What's the history? Where's the location? Tell so um, my ethnicity, I am Jewish. Mm. I'm, well, I'm a mixture. I'm, well, my mother's Jewish, so that makes me Jewish. Uh -huh. uh, but my heritage is um, Romanian, Irish, a bit of Spanish, mm. and in, uh, I think there's... Maybe a bit of English in there, not very much though. So mm. it's um it's a it's a bit of a exotic mix. Mm. Um, I was born in London. I was born in the Royal London Hospital, East London. Um, I lived in Camberwell until I was around ten years old, and then I moved to the countryside because oh. my mum actually got mugged in Brixton. And um, she was like, right, that's it. Mm. We're moving out of London. That's it. We're taking the kids out of London. You know, it's going to be it's so much better for them. Mm. So they moved us to the countryside, me and my brother. Um, I moved to a place called Huntingdon. You know Huntingdon? Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. So I moved up there. And then we moved near to a town called Spalding in Lincolnshire. I do know that. Yeah. Know so, that. so that was like my kind of like teenage years was in Spalding and... Um, where I kind of fell in love with drum and bass and jungle and hardcore and 
started going to all the big raves, like the Sanctuary in Milton Keynes, mm. the Walkers in Bedford, Pleasure Dome in Skegness. Like, Pleasure wow. Dome in Skegness was my first ever big rave that I went to. Oh, so you really went to the, the top tier yeah. raves. But I was going to the local ones as well. And, like, you know, I was listening to, like, tapes, mm. you know, cassette tapes at school. And that's how, what got me into Jungle. There was a, a mix, there was a, I say a mix tape, it was a, Compilation album called Jung a Jungle was it Jungle Mania? Or... <laughs> jungle Mania. Was it Jungle Mania? <laughs> yeah, 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 I heard yeah. That shit. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> I think I was about fourteen yeah, at the time. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, like that was my that's when I first started hearing some of those tunes and like then I started listening to tapes and I, I would never forget how the jumping jack frost tape. I can't remember where it's from. Big shout out to Frost. Actually. Oh, day. Yeah, I love Frost. Frost too. Um, but yeah, and like all, a lot of very, very early jungle tunes. So, you know, I was listening to them on my Walkman at school. And mm. so, yeah, like I got into the music from young. And, and even before that, you know, I was, I was always into music. Mm. But yeah, that's that's where it started. And then basically um, I, I was a complete tear away, going to all the raves, getting in trouble. And then went to college a couple of times, got chucked out. And then then we did another course at college, became a travel agent, <laughs> strangely. Mad. And oh, then got my first job. Son. Yeah, got, got my first job. Left home, moved back to London. Um, the rest is history, really. Like, moved back to London, was a travel agent for, like, a couple of years. Really? And then, like... I was going out to all the raves. Because obviously I'd, I'd got into the music from young. I was going to all the raves from young when I was living at home. Mm -hmm. So then I came back to London and I was like, oh, you know, I want to go Metalheads. I want to go Labyrinth. I want to go all these, like, all the Bagley's, mm -hmm. um, Stratford Rex, like, all, all of the raves I was I was going to. And, um, yeah, that's and that's how the dancing came about. And I'd always, like, admired the stage dancers at raves, you know, I guess, like, as a young girl going out then, you know, the dancers were like, wow. Mm. You know what I mean? They don't, you don't really have it anymore. You no. know? It's, it's not a culture like it was then. But back then it was just like... And obviously, as women, they were the only thing you had to kind of look up to. Because, yeah. like, apart from, like, maybe DJ rap, like, there wasn't really any f female DJs. There was a, a few... Chemistry. In, like, chemistry and Storm. Oh, yeah. Like, um... Like Lisa Lashes, yeah. Lisa Loud, and on the house scene and stuff, but there wasn't yeah. that many. No, no, no. So like, we used to look at the dancers like, wow, mm. you know, I want to, I want to do that. So I guess it just happened naturally, really. But I also get the impression that, and this is even uh, arguably throughout your career, you've been a contributor. You've, you've, you've given something that wasn't there the space to be there. Yeah, like you've. Always. You saw that there was a hole in the in the market for dancers, so you went all in on that. And not just any dancers. Like I, want, we want, I wanted it to be a brand. I wanted it to be recognised. I, I was like, I don't just want to be a dancer. Mm. I want to be like, I want to be like the MCs. I want to be up there. I want people to be a fan. I want, and you know, it, we took it there. You know, we used to come on stage and people used to go absolutely mental, like mm. like they did when the MCs were there. We mm. were as as big back then, yeah, you know. So yeah, we definitely accomplished that. It just it it just goes to show that if you've got an idea to fill a space in in whether it's a genre or whether it's a a sound or a, a movement, an art, a dance, whatever, you you just got to take advantage. Just do it. Just do it. Mm. Because what happens is someone else will end up doing it. This is the thing, like, and I've always wanted to be, you know, unique in what I'm doing. I've never wanted to copy other people. I've always like always put my own spin on everything, like. I find like copying other people and being like others boring. Like mm. I've always just like wanted to be different. Yeah. Nothing worse than seeing the same kind of passe yeah. performance and then knowing full well that you could be taking a spot and actually doing it. Yeah. You you said something uh, early doors there regarding individuality and yeah your uh, your dexterity on the decks for starters, but mm -hmm. also your you're combining that with the movements, things, elements, I guess, from a performance level that you took from <coughs> Nani Shakers and just, you know, ever so slightly tweaking it and reapplying it into a DJ set. It just happened naturally, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I never thought, right, 
So I'm going to like, <laughs> I'm going to be this maniac behind the desk. <laughs> It's this happened is over the a course of a few years because I've been DJing for 15 years, right? And, you know, I haven't... It's only since lockdown that I've been playing full D&B sets and more... And bass and garage and stuff. I've only I've been doing that a couple of years. Before that, I was on the mashup circuit. I was playing hip-hop. I was playing EDM house. You know, I was making that stuff. I had a lot of success with music in the kind of EDM space. Um, but since lockdown, since hologram sessions... It's become very bassy mm. over here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying. <laughs> and, she, yeah, yeah. and that's why everyone wants to talk about Nani Shay because everyone's just like very intrigued about my history in the scene. And it's happened very naturally. And the mentalness behind the decks, it's always been there. You know, the years that I've been DJing, I've always been lively, but definitely taking it to new levels since lockdown. Yeah. I just feel like. When it comes to you and Dex, music, it's free. It comes out the way it does with you. And that's an identity in itself. Mm-hmm. It's a USP in itself. Yeah. Like, there's no one else that could do you, you know, f- from a performance level. No. Like, right, it's, okay. it's kind of unmatched, I reckon. Uh, like, well, I'm the saying. energy is like... Cause, because I don't put it on, it just happens. Yeah. I'm not joking, like sometimes, yeah, I'll be going to a job, I'll be going to a gig, and I'll be, and my, my manager will tell you this because he drives me everywhere. Sometimes I'm sitting there in the car with my hood up and I'm like this. And I'm like, <laughs> especially if it's time of the month. Mm. I mean, mate, yeah, I'm just like a miserable, <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not in the mood tonight. As soon, I'm not joking, yeah, as soon as I press play, <laughs> I'm gone. It happened like I did a live stream uh, at Christmas with um, MC Neat and Ultra, and my mate Rough Touch. Oh, sometimes we, yeah, well, sometimes Envy. yeah, I love I love <laughs> Neat and Ultra. See, uh, sometimes I do um, streams with my mate Rough Touch. He's a garage DJ, right? So we do some garage and bass sets. And I went down there at Christmas, and I was in a terrible mood all the way up there. And I thought, mm, I'm not sure tonight's going to be any good. Honestly, <laughs> if you watch this stream back. I was going mental. I literally went, press play. Shushing. Mm. I'm like this, turn into this mania. T- and Tasmanian happens. devil shit. Tasmanian like, devil. Pfft, it pfft, happens, come up and, and it happens there. on like almost every set. I'd have to be really ill. I've even DJed just after getting over COVID and stuff like that and still had energy. Not quite the same, but had like... Really? Yeah, like, I don't know what it is. It's just it's just natural. So if you see me, yeah, and you, and you, uh, you know... You think, oh yeah, she's on loads of drugs, or oh she's putting it on. Honestly, I'm really not. Are you challenged by it? Are you challenged by people's perceptions of you? Like, I mean, I can't imagine you are, but does does, does sometimes it's like, yo, you know what? If you cur- if a girl can't be identifiably herself, then what can she do? What's the what's the fucking problem, guys? Do you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> this is quite an interesting subject because you know I I I'm t- I do read comments about myself. Not always. Can't always be bothered, but. I do sometimes read comments, what people say, and I don't honestly can tell you that I don't care. I really don't care what people say about me. And I've always been like that, from like the drama base arena of forum days and dogs and acid forum days, which back in the day was like the only way that trolls really could uh, slag you off. Uh. Now it's like everywhere. Um, I'd say like with me, I'm I'm a very Marmite kind of artist. You either really love me or you hate me. And I, I see lots of people that hate me for absolutely no reason, just because I'm like lively and spreading like happy vibes. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. They always find something to slag me. Oh, I wish she would stop jumping about. Oh yeah, she can't mix. Well, I mean, <laughs> okay, I'm just, I mean, you, you only have to listen to like this sort of 6 million DJ sets of me that yeah. online to see that I, I can mix. I know I'm no Andy C, but I, you know what I mean? I can put a set together. Yeah, yeah. And I know I can select. Without but, question. Okay, yeah. how, how is that even in debate? <laughs> but like, I know. So, but you, you know, there's a lot of haters and jealous people out there, but I've got to tell you people, I don't care. I don't care what you want to say about me, all right? I don't care because I'll always be myself. Do you think it prohibits, like, artists, male and female, to really go the distance in their own personal (coughs) output of of performance, like, just knowing that there's a couple of dickheads that... Some people, yeah. I think it, like, it really affects some people. And I think a lot of people, like, they don't think before they're saying stuff. Uh, And, like, for me, like I said, you know, it doesn't really bother me. The odd day, if, you know, like... 
if if I'm having a bad day and I see like a comment, I might for for five minutes I might be like, Phew. then yeah. I think oh whatever. I just block people. Mm. Literally, I have never ever even entertained any of these people. Mm. I just think, do you know what? Yeah, if you have taken your time to go on my shit and 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 be spreading hate you must be mental mm. you're not right in your head because i've never mm. done it if i see something i don't like i just move on yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't even say anything i just i just think no i'm not keen on that next yeah, yeah. i don't go oh, fuck. oh yeah oh i hate this it's like <laughs> who's got time for that who has got time for that? Right, if Get you're me. if you're listening and not watching, <laughs> so listen, yeah. This lady just... is so animated. It's, I just, I'm just here enchanted watching her move. It's like she just goes like. Oh, thanks, that's, babe. That's the real but shit. But listen, let me tell you, yeah, because you know, you, you, I'm sure there'll be a few people watching this, like intrigued or like to hear what I got to say and whatever. But honestly, if you if you you really want to write bad shit about me under my videos. Crack on, because I don't care. Mm. That's it. So now you you're obviously up. mental and not happy with your own life. There's that. There's that theory that even the haters love you too, because you know sometimes they, you know, that you you become such a you become such a a, a thing to them. And you can't. They can't help it. It's like they, they can't, can't. They just get so enraged yeah. by your happiness. It's like, <laughs> oh my god! I've got. I've just got to. I've just got to tell everyone how how much I hate her. It's like. <laughs> Wait, wait. So yeah, it's just so fine. <laughs> because I've got to tell you, yeah, I don't never hurt nobody. I, I'm just out here spreading peace, mm. love, and unity, man. Because mm -hmm. that's what it was about. That's yeah. what it is about for me still. Yeah, uh, yeah, and the drum and bass landscape, the music landscape keeps mm -hmm. on evolving, and it's all about the numbers. It's all about the. Um, I would argue, actually, and it, this this does come from a good place that it is about. I think this generation's drum and bass is is all about the. Uh, expression of good times we've all had the bad times yeah so now this is there seems to be almost to the point where skills don't actually need apply too much just as long as you're enjoying yourself <coughs> well i don't know man what do you think what are we talking about drum and bass or we talking yeah about, talking like, about dj in general dj in general mm. i mean i think like the dj in world is so saturated mm. I, I sometimes it takes my breath away as how, to how many djs there are oh, out there fucking lot of DJs even like there. even like you know, female DJs. When I started DJing in 2007, right, there was not that many female DJs. And I was I was kind of in a group of, a uh, small group of a new wave of female DJs. And I, I think back then it was like model DJs. Mm. You know, they wanted like pretty girls you could play. And I, I travelled the world doing that because of that when I first started out, you mm -hmm. know. But there wasn't that many of us, mm. you know. Now it's oh, I just honestly it really does blow my mind. Yeah. As, and you know I love it that there's so many girls, but I, what I would love to see is that more of them are actually getting booked on on shows. Mm. Like you get you get one girl on a show at the bottom of the flyer yeah. most of the time. Not every promoter because there are some that are really trying, but it's still very it's still a long way to go. You mm. know? Do you think some of that is is um, because of the the timeline in which that it takes to develop uh, a brand and an act and an art and a D as a dj you know what i mean like i know i know there's also this i know, I know and there is a, a a bigger case that you know one female upon a flyer is should in theory cater for enough but i, I do no. feel like the complete opposite there's two ways to look at it yeah, one you can look at it in a inclusivity way mm. or the other way you can look at it is Okay, maybe there's not enough women that are making music. Maybe there's not enough women that are putting the effort in to get, I don't know, big numbers on their videos, or there's not enough women that put in enough effort into, like, look at everything I do, mm. for instance. Yeah, you, you know, slam it, though. Na name another female in the industry, in the base world, world that puts as much effort into their content as I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah you know, yeah. as much as I am very much like female, um, um, female power. You know, I'm, I'm all about that and I, I want to see more women winning. I also believe that you still have to be talented. You still have to work hard. You still have to put time and effort into, into what you're doing. Uh, yeah. You can't just expect to get bookings because you're a woman. Yeah, like That's that. like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, you know, even when I try and bring the girls together and I might put together a, a lineup with all girls or... You know, I still I've got to rate them. Yeah, I've still got to think. Rate. Yeah, you're sick. Yeah, you know, you can you can be part of my clique. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, you still got to be good. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I do. 
do, especially do, like, sorry to cut you. No, go. Especially sure. like for someone like me who works so hard. Yeah. And has been working so hard for over 20 years. Like I've literally never stopped. Mm. And like, if you want success, that's what you've got to do. Mm. That's it. Yeah, that's Roll right. up your sleeves, work hard. I don't want to hear it that you feel you're entitled to this or that after only being around for a couple of years. Nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've got to understand the, the kind of pecking order. No eighth place trophies or anything like that. It's got to be right. It's got to be a lot. Yeah. Okay, so look, you're you're <laughs> exceptionally rated on this show. I want to know a day in the life of Charlotte. I mean, we're talking now about work rate. Mm-hmm. Let's get into your daily work rate. What did you do from eight in the morning, well, from six in the morning, from four in the morning? What did you do? <laughs> Let's go. So, <laughs> okay, here's, here's I want to know what you eat for breakfast. So, I want to know what you do in the gym. I want to just lay it, lay it, lay it on the table. So, Sorry. usually I wake up about eight o'clock in the morning. Good, cool. Right, and wake up and immediately we'll check in my emails. Good blah, mood blah, or blah, bad blah. mood? Depends on time of the month, really. Okay. Depends on time of the month, being a woman or all that, yeah. you know. Um, so, I sometimes I go out for a run with my dog. Sometimes I just get up and I'm working flat out straight away. You, like... I run my own label. I run my own management company. I run my own. I run everything myself. Um, I have some, some massive projects I'm, I'm working on mm. all the time, but not just my own because um, my company also manages Fabio and Groove Rider. Mm-hmm. So we like to do every, every, Don's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everything they do. Who did hear what she just said? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know everything they do is basically down. To to me, really, yeah. apart from them, or th- them obviously themselves. But you can rewind that back and listen to it again if you want. So as much Big as well as everything I do, as well as everything I do, I uh, yeah, my company runs their lives mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. Everything they do, the orchestra, it was that's all done. To Stop me. it! So yes, no way. So you got the ins and outs on that one. Incredible. Yeah, I'm, right, I'm part wow. of that team. There's a big team on it, yeah, obviously, yeah. but yes, we we are part of that. So aside from that. I um, run my la- label. I shoot. We sh- I have a um, production company. Mm-hmm. So like all the hologram sessions, everything is done in house. I shoot all my own music videos. I direct all my mu- own music so videos. So you do it all in house. You do it. Who everything. who does the hologram? Me and Joe. Joe. I have a business partner, strength manager called Joe. Big up the wizard, Joe, oh, who is an Joe, absolute wizard. genius. And we do everything together. We make music together. I have my own studio. Everything is done by the two of us. So that includes. My career, Fabio and Groove Riders' career, Fabio's career, um, all my holograms, all my music videos, all my music. I have my own studio, as I said. Um, I write, write and produce all my own stuff with Joe. Um, we are a self-sufficient dream team, basically. Mm. But it, I've got to tell you, it, it's, it kills me. Really? Because, like, no one else helps me with anything, really. It's, mm. it's hard, you know? Mm. And that, that's success, I guess, mm. but, like... It's tiring. <laughs> no, I think I think some of that because I can relate with that, and I think sometimes it's about um, being in the game for a period of time for for you know for a few seasons now, where yeah, your, your heyday seasons, you know, you know what I mean, <laughs> like where your heydays are becoming more like uh, you know away days, and you're you're just looking at things like, well, actually, if I have help from somebody, I need to make sure that they're they, you know, what I mean, they're packing the same weight from they're their side. The mustard, definitely. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. It can be few and far between. And when you find that right person, it's like, It's taken me years to, like, find someone on my wavelength, to find someone who works as hard as me. Mm. And, you know, I've I've worked with a lot of different people over the years, like different producers, different engineers, different writers, different everything, right? Mm. And, yeah, I've worked with some great people. Prior to meeting Joe, we met in 2000 and just after I had this hit with Snoop, um, 2015, 16, 16. 2016, 2016. So mm. we met then and started working together and it's slowly become like a, you know, we've slowly built an empire just together. Just slowly gel, just works. Yeah, like we worked for about three years not making any money at all when we were just building everything up and he had a vision for me. That's how it started. He had his vision for me and he believed in everything I was doing and then slowly but surely and then I was like doing all my stuff but I was helping out Fab and Groove as well with everything they were doing. And then, you know, slowly but surely between us, we've built like an empire, which is mm. Karma London, our company. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm really proud of what yeah, we've you done. You should be. Damn fucking right. We've done some big stuff. We've done some big stuff. So this so. brings you up to around 12 o'clock, one o'clock lunchtime, right? So <laughs> See, we've done all of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot we were talking about a day in the life. You carry um, on, you carry on. So, you know, you've it got... It really your... depends, you know. Some days I'll go to the studio. Some days I'll have a shoot. 
Some days I'll be editing videos because I do that too. Edit all my own um, after movies, all the crazy videos you see on my page. I'm editing those. Mm. I'm also whipping Joe because you know I'm a woman and I can multitask. So I'm like ringing him up, right? What? What's, what's going on today? God, I you know love what I mean? That. Bossing it out. Um, mm. Sometimes I'm going to meetings, multiple meetings. Today I've been to a couple of meetings. Um, I'm on the phone a lot, hustling away, doing business. Mm. I'm on the emails. I'm, I'm, God, I work, I work hours every day. Okay, now for those who running uh, my empire, and we have to just say at this point, it's reasonably late in the evening right now, mm. and this is still on. You know, and I mean, like my girl came in ready, <laughs> straight in, like <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like Polaris missiles coming straight through. You know, yeah, like, I was on. like, right, um, um, I need some hair. <laughs> he actually gave me this hat because I was having a really bad hair. Day. Uh, big up Cyber Dog all day. <laughs> yeah. Terry Davy. Yeah, we're going to connect that. Um, what do you do for chill time? <laughs> like, I mean... I watch you, EastEnders. Is it, do you? I love EastEnders. Shout out EastEnders. I've been on EastEnders a couple of times. Have you? Yeah. Doing what? Just cameo roles. Stop it. Yeah, because I act too. Do you? I don't really get that much time to do it um, anymore. Yeah. I was in a big film with Simon Pegg a few years ago. What? Um, 07, 08. What? Big film with him and Megan Fox. Is this widely known? Huh? Is this widely yeah. known? Yeah. You've not done your research, bro. I don't need to. You're I'm here to chat. hologram sessions and yeah. Narnie Shakers. Like, I'm, just here, I'm just here getting information that the people don't know. So okay. I, can, I don't so, have to know. So in 2008, see. I was in a film a joke. called How to Lose Friends and Alienate yes. People with Simon Pegg, Megan Fox, Jeff Bridges, etc., etc. It was a big film. So I did that. And around that time, I was uh, modelling and I was acting and dancing, um, presenting as well. I was doing all of that kind of media stuff. Um, this was before I became a DJ. Mm. Oh, I probably just started DJing around that time. Um, so yeah, I did that, and I still do bits of acting when I get mm. to, when I get a chance. But yeah, the script thing does me in. I, I just can't retain information on a page. I'm pretty good at learning lines, actually. Oh yeah, I can do accents and. Yeah, I'm kind of trained. Hold on, you can do what? Yeah, go on. So no, give, no, me, no, give me an accent. Enough. Hold on, here you no, go. No, 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 we should not sit down. <laughs> it's that time of the show. Accent time. <laughs> no. Right, give me a, give me a, give me a, uh, an Irish. No, because I might sound really bad on what doing it. So. <laughs> but I, I can do it if I practice. Uh, anyway, um, next. Um, um, but yes, I, I, I am a, I, I'm kind of trained in everything: dance, acting. You know, um, self-taught. Um. I went to acting evening school and but mm -hmm. a lot of it's self taught from yeah, yeah. just like being a bat. Yeah, yeah, being a bat. Being but I'm a performer. Like yeah. if you was to ask me like what do I do, I'd just say I'm a performer because I'm it's a big umbrella, isn't it? Yeah, I do, so. yeah, yeah. Well, tell That's me it. this, why is it that the industry and I, I say that really loosely, I mean it, I'm sure there are huge exceptions. Comment below. But my feeling is, why are unique, identifiably tenacious artists not supported enough? That's a really interesting question because I've always felt that. I, I've always felt like um, the industry hasn't supported me as much as it could have done. Why is that? Because I, I don't know. I think it's because I've I'm all, I've always been unapologetic. Uh, unapologetically myself mm. um because i have a big personality because i'm out there i'm fun mm. so maybe like people may not have taken me s as seriously as they should or they don't take me as seriously as they should mm. but like that's why i think it's important for me to come on these kind of shows to let people know that i'm a serious bitch okay yeah and i don't play around and i you know i'm i'm serious about my business but yeah, I think like, um, especially these days, like big personalities are almost frowned upon. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I also feel like sometimes there's a complacency for your own people. It, with with you, you know, London, England and London, it's it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. It's only when you only get your flowers when you die. Do you know what I mean? Huh. Right? I'm, I, I'm still waiting for people to give me my flowers. We're I'm, here for the flowers, girl. I, Come thanks. on. <laughs> That's what but I am, mean. though. I just feel like I do. I, I, I'm a very grateful person. Don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm super grateful. You know, I have an amazing life. I've done amazing things and I'm still doing amazing things. I've, you know, I, I feel like, almost feel like my story has only just started, huh. really. Stop. Right. That is profoundly correct. 
you are just starting. And mm. that's what's bonkers because I think when it comes with the hate and all the kind of stuff, that's so 2023. It is. And, and like, you, you're, but you're so relevant again. Yeah. When you were relevant before, but in a different model. Like, the fact that you've yeah, rebranded. I've, re I've reinvented myself because, yeah. like, like I say, that shit's <clears throat> sick as fuck. I can say, oh, yeah, you know, th this year I've been in the business 24 years. But when I say I've been in the business 24 years, I haven't been DJing for 24 years. I haven't been playing drum and bass for 24 years. Oh. I've been. I've been. I started out as a dancer. I was a. I was a model on the front cover of of magazines. Yeah. I was um, an actress. Like I said, I've I've done films. I've done adverts. Yeah. I've done this. I've done that. I was. You know. I, I've done presenting. Um, I've done all of these. Things. I've, I've been a DJ for fifteen years. Yeah. I've made music. I've had hit records with Snoop Dogg. I've. Oh God, loads. So many things. I mean, even like this oh, year shit. and last year, I had a deal with Rimmel, um, London. Um, I did three adverts for them. Um, made the music, vocaled them, um, that ended up on an advert. You know, God, so many things. So, yeah, I've completely re reinvented myself over those 23 mm -hmm. years because I feel like if you keep doing that, you, you'll you always be relevant. Yeah, I because, I don't know, let's get it straight. Like, things don't last forever. No. Like, it's very hard as an artist doing one thing for 23 years, for instance, and still be relevant. That's why, you know, Fabian Groove Rider is so amazing. Because mm. after 30 plus years yeah. in this business, you know, creating drum and bass, yeah. they are still massive. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like people like Frosty, you know, yeah, all of these Frosty. legendary people that I have so much respect for. Um, you know, they're still they're still they're still doing the still thing, man. Doing it. But you know, for me personally, like, yeah, like I've definitely reinvented myself in the last two and a bit years mm. and it's an exciting journey. I yeah. actually was saying this to Fabio last night. Like I was like, you know what? I'm just enjoying the ride at the moment because I almost feel like a young girl again. Like I'm just in a new space. I'm in this bass music space mm. that I wasn't really in before. Um, and it's new for me. Let's talk about your fabs. I'm really intrigued <laughs> about it. So like, you know, <laughs> this is the questions people want to know. All right. <laughs> right. So... What's a what's what's an evening in with you and Fabs? So you just <laughs> what, 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 what do you talk about? Do you talk about uh, what, what, what's, you know what? what's the scoop? Me and him, right? <clears throat> I think the one thing that's kept us together for so many years is the fact that we never run out of things to talk about. Mm. We talk for hours. You know, like we will lay in bed at night chatting shit until we fall asleep. He reads me stories from the Mail Online, or we'd love trashy stuff. Mm -hmm. Always like we love hip hop. We're always like looking for the next new big new hip hop artist. We love to eat. We eat loads of nice favorite food. foods. What do you guys eat? What's, your, what's the go to? Japanese is our favorite, nice. but we love like everything, man. Nice. We love we love all kinds of different food. But we we are he's he's very different to me, and I think that's one thing that's make makes us work. He's very different to what's me. What's the yin and yang in that? So we'll give me give me differences. <clears throat> I mean, he's not crazy like me. <laughs> But he is crazy like me. Like, if you know him, he's like, he's got a very zany, crazy, fiery personality. We call him the boiler. Mm -hmm. That's what we call him. Like, between like, him and my circle. And anyone that knows me is going to laugh. At this point, we aren't editing, so <laughs> yeah, keep yeah. going. Yeah, we call him the boiler. His name in my phone has been the boiler for the last 20 years. That's so. incredible. Yeah. So, he's very, he's crazy in his own way, but he's not. Like crazy as in like I'm crazy. He stands behind the decks like this. The only time you'll see him dance behind the decks is oh. if he's had a few drinks. It's iconic, do man. Do, do, the way <laughs> he's right. these two, these two Fabs and Groove over the desk, you can see the silhouette of them just like Yeah, just silhouette. Just they don't need cool to move. They don't shit. need to do all this. Oh, they're God, just like yeah. they're just they're just them. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's just them. So we're very different like that. Um I think since I've been playing drama bass, there are a few tunes that we cross cross on that we like but generally our styles are very different but you know sometimes i play at their parties and you know i can i can mix it up and mm. do a fabio and groove rider type set does know? he ever do you stand over your decks watching you do it again yeah he told me to mix though really but does he, he ever does he ever you know while you're djing just turn down the mask no no he doesn't come near <laughs> me i'm like how the hell are you? <laughs> um, no, he taught me to mix. You know, back in the day when it was, you know, you had to learn to mix. Yeah, yeah, before yeah. Before the sync button, which, yeah. you know, we all use, so yeah. whatever. I but, feel for, I feel, you know, like, you remember back in the day, there was 
record fucking boxes. And I mean, like, yeah, yeah I have, I've still got like so much big vinyl. bastard, like big square fuck, like some of those big. Do you remember those big square ones? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> Fabio's got like fifty thousand records in storage. How many? About fifty thousand. He's got like obviously he comes from the dub plate era, yeah, and he's got BBC. Uh, edits and he was spending and samples, like it? big money on those things. But yeah. I've still I've got boxes of vinyl too. I kind of started mixing on vinyl but never played out with vinyl where do you guys store that love you got like a he's whole he's got it in storage really? i don't even know where it is to be honest he oh, keeps wow. it very under wraps because i'm always like listen we could buy another house with that with the with the what that's worth oh no, no you're not going near it no you're not going near it you're not going near it so i've been trying people to get near this vinyl for like some can you time. imagine can you imagine the but place yeah, i know he won't let anyone near it though very protective Anyway, but I've got quite a few boxes. I need to go through it actually. I've got some. I've got some dubs up there. Really? Yeah. You got some uh, VIP specials. Loads. Like, as prior to Fabio, I used to go out with um, Quiff from Total Science. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't remember, don't remember it, remember. but I'm from Total Science, of so course. I, yeah. Big shout out to Quiff. Yeah. Um, I used to go out with him. Went out. To, went out with him for like three years, and um, around the time when Total Science were making some of the most iconic tunes ever. Like, and he wrote quite mm. a few tunes about me, actually. Greatest Thing, um, Living With Beaker. Because he used to call me Beaker. Beaker. Yeah, he used to call me Beaker. Why? Beaker from the Muppets. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, stop. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, loads of the tunes. Loads of some of the iconic ones. But, um, you know, I was with him when he made Squash and some of the some of the big ones. Wow. You know, I, I, oh, their music back then was just... Absolutely you, did, Can you imagine, like, dude, you were like part of that that influenced real big tunes. Yeah, big tunes like Greatest Thing. I remember him writing that and naming it after me. There was a there was a few. There was a few. And then we split up and I got with Fabio. And then there was a couple of tunes he made because he hated me. <laughs> <laughs> so which just happens as well. Silicone Mistress being one of them. Oh right. Yeah, there was a few. Hey, listen, you know, no, you, can't win, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. No, you can't win them all. Yeah. Life you never know what's going to happen. But, like, yeah, he, he was a big influence on me, like, musically. Um, we were really into, like, he really got me into, like, deep hip-hop and, like, I've always been a hip-hop fan. Mm. Like, hip-hop's arguably, like, always been my favourite genre. Yeah, like, it's hard whether not to I was playing it, because I went for a stage of playing, I had 10 years of, like, mm. ch- like travelling the world, playing, playing like, the mash-up circuit, playing the West End circuit. Like, that was my training ground. Are you into, are you into like, breaking or graffiti bre- breakdancing? Because I imagine there's a, there's an Arnie shaker, you can dig the breakdancing. Yeah, I can dig it. Definitely yeah. dig it. But I'm, I am a big hip-hop fan, and Fabio's a big hip-hop fan, and, like, especially, like, the early 2000, mid-2000, late, kind of up to about 2010, like, that era of hip-hop was just... Yeah, unbelievable yeah. oh my god can oh you? My god when I mean, you switch on so MTV bass at any given point you know, it was just like what the fuck <coughs> banger after banger banger after banger, after banger. And, after banger. And, and like and the club scene back then was like so amazing yeah, there was yeah. so, so many tunes but you know I'm still really into it and we me and Fabio um, we're always online looking for new artists do you go out do you go out to clubs what's your favourite uh, clubs that you both would go to not so much anymore really. I think because we're like so busy working yeah. um, I love festivals I go to festivals in the summer yeah. I go to wireless like Ooh. I love going wireless just to go out um, but I think as I've got busier, um, especially in the last couple of years, mm. I just haven't had time really. But occasionally yeah. I go out. Yeah, I love going out to garage as well. Like garage mm. is a, is, a, is a, one of my first loves. As, mm. as much as I, you know, was part of the drum and bass scene early, I've I've been going out to garage since like nine nine two thousand. Yeah. So I was like an iron up a girl. I went to all the garage raves. I used to dance at quite a lot of garage raves. So. Everyone in the garage scene are like family to me as well. And I do play garage sometimes mm. as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got a big love for garage. I love garage. You know what I love the most, Charlotte, is the fact that, because you and me come from the same pedigree and time, yeah, yeah. And time of, of being into music. Mm-hmm. And this may sound really lame as shit, but I see you and me, me and you, I see that. Yeah. I can totally see the timeline. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. kind of know... Where, where you were at in yeah. 2000s to 2005 to two, when you said MTV bass there I could almost like picture the songs yeah, 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 immediately definitely. and I, I really loved that I'm, I'm endeared by that <laughs> even like the channel U days yeah you're talking UK because yeah, 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 I've always I've always been a, an American hip hop fan like there's been a few UK artists that I've, I've, I've fucked with but like mostly I was 
am and am still obsessed with American mm. hip hop. And I actually got to work with quite a few American artists like over the years I've worked with with Snoop, Fat Man Scoop, Rich the Kid, Riff Raff. <coughs> and all the I've mentioned you you know, they've gone on the great things. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've I've worked with a lot of American artists. Um and a lot of uh, English too. But I've always been a big American hip hop fan. Mm. Um UK wise <coughs> Mm-hmm. You know, there's 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 a lot too, mm. but like Channel U days were like yeah. legendary. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I did it, quite a lot of those videos back in the day as well. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, I, I would imagine so. Yeah, I imagine again, Nani Shakers moving on into like. Music I did loads of music. Videos. Yeah, I was in like Mystique, Scandalous. Yeah. I was in some big like legendary videos back in the day. I was in that. I was in uh, Lisa Mafia all over Sugar Babes. Um, I'm not even going to sing it because I can't sing. But um, <laughs> Freak, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Like they were shot at Bagley's. I remember like we shoot a lot of stuff there. Um, <clears throat> the first End Dubs video when they first came out. Um, Jeez, man. Better not waste my time. Uh, if you look, yeah, yeah. look that one up on YouTube, it's hilarious. I'm, I'm all over that video. That was their first one before they got signed. Like loads. I've met, like, I've known a lot of artists when they were first breaking out, like mm. big artists, you know what I mean? So I can definitely say, like, over the years that. I've known a lot of people at the, at the beginnings of their career. Even like, Man. God, even like Lady Leisha, like when I first worked with her, she was big, but mm-hmm. she, it, 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 you know, nothing to what she's Stratospheric. done and what she is now. Do you, you know? think that, do you think the key to longevity is, is being able to move with the ebbs and flows of, of your skill sets and what, what is needed at <clears> the moment? Like, cause you're, well, you've, you've got a, You've got a toolbox of different things that you can do and you lend it to whatever to make mm-hmm. your imprint yeah. for, for whatever it is. Um, longevity is, like I said earlier, um, I think a lot of it is, one, just being able to re- keep reinventing yourself. Mm. Um, also, it's about keeping up with the times, not being afraid of mixing with people that might be younger than you and being on their level. Mm. Um, and just keeping it fresh, mm. you know, like, yeah, I might sit down sometimes and be like, wow, it was better then. Or, oh, um, it was better before social media. Oh, it was better when we could be <clears throat> more free. Or it was better when everyone didn't have a mobile phone in a rave. Or, But maybe it was. But, like, you've got to keep it moving. Mm. You've got to keep it moving. You have to keep with the times. You've mm. got to, like, just keep evolving. Mm. Because if you don't, you just become stale. Prehistoric. And prehistoric. Like... We can all think fondly. You can always think fondly of a certain time. Yeah, it's true. Especially when you've been around a while. You can, you know, I sit back and I'm like, oh, yeah, Nani Shakers 2001. And, oh, that was such an amazing, amazing time. And, you know, it was it, it was just so free and so this and so that. Everything was perfect. But then I sit down and I think, yeah, okay, it was that. But I was also skint. Mm. I had no money. Mm. I, I, I didn't know what, I, I didn't own a, a big house. I didn't own a nice car. I didn't hadn't travelled the world. I hadn't done all these things that I've done now. Mm. So was it better then? It's always hindsight, isn't it? It's, I don't know. it's that thing, yeah. Because yeah. you you really you're putting yourself back into a place with all the wealth and knowledge that you've gained from mm. doing it. There's really no mistakes in this thing, and yeah. there isn't a. You make a lot of mistakes. Like I've made so many. I still mm. make them, mm. but I just. <clears throat> I think the main thing is I'm just out here trying to be a good person, trying to spread peace, love, and unity, trying to be nice to everybody, look after my family, my fans, and my fans mean the world to me. You know, trying to be yeah. nice to everybody. But they mean the, you mean the world to them. I've, that's one thing I'll say about the comments. I mean, I, I, I know you're looking on balance, I think, but all mm. I see is like... Most people. I say yeah. like, when I talk about trolls, yeah, they're, they're a small percentage because yeah. like, I have some amazing supporters. You know, I'd say 95% of the comments I see and the people online that, are, that I see talking about mm. me is positive. Yeah. And they love me that and they love saying. the energy. And thank you for that. Because honestly, like, I'm just trying to be me. Mm. And that's it. And it's, it's, I don't have an ego. I don't, you know, I, I'm not trying to be something I'm not. More, it should be like that, man. They should be more like, this is me, fuck you. You know, I am like that. I say I don't have an ego. I don't know. Do you think I do? Well, you'd be a pretty shit artist if you didn't have well, an I, ego. I guess I do, to a point. But I don't have an ego where I'm a dickhead. I think that's the point. I think what it is, I think what it is, is you're not self-absorbed. You can I mean, re- I think I'm to a point. I think we all are. No, no, you're not. I don't, yeah. I don't see that in you. I, Maybe not. I do try Egos, and... egos is an, an assess- If you've got it under wraps, it's an assess- Yeah, you've got to keep evil. it in check. Yeah. You, I think, you, right, okay. 
I think you've got to know who you are. You've got to um, know your worth. Mm. Um, you've got to respect yourself and mm. believe in yourself. Right. That's it. But it's when you let your ego take over your, you and you start acting like a fool. Yeah. And you start just acting too full of yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. When we Listen, we know pe- <laughs> we've known of people mm. like that. Many. Many and so many, many people. <laughs> <laughs> I do you know what my, the main thing is. I hate it when people change. I, I get quite upset about that. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, but you used to be cool though. You used to be. What happened to you? <laughs> well, really, <laughs> what happened to you? Like, this could get spicy, right? So, <laughs> I'm not so, gonna do that. <laughs> that's as far as that goes. <laughs> I rate it, man. I rate everything you're on at the moment. What's the future? Tell us what's going on. Okay. So, from the tippy top, important thing. Tell us what's going on. So. <clears throat> Hologram sessions. Mm-hmm. I have like some very exciting episodes coming out. So watch the space for those. I've got some amazing MCs um, and a DJ one as well. <gasps> First ever. That yeah. is that's a world premiere, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm not telling you who it's with, though. But... <laughs> you have to listen out for that one, yeah, baby. Yeah. And um, Come on. music. I've got like, I'm working on loads of music at the moment. Yeah, just... um. Yeah, and um, running my empire. Yeah. I'm doing my own nights. Um, oh, big up DJ Mills, obviously. Yeah, big up Mills. Come on. And 180 Society as well. Obviously, mm-hmm. 180 Society. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> big dad up. Yeah, big project that um, I started working on about a year, or, a year or so ago. And it was just a kind of like idea of a, of a collective of female talented DJs. Um, that's how it started. And I was just like, you know, let's just like try and create some unity and um, got to send a shout out to Ministry of Sound actually because they, they've they been supporting us from the start. Sick. And we, we've kind of had a sort of semi-residency there. We've done quite a few shows up there. And they moved us from the second room to doing the main room. So we've done two big shows. Yeah, two big wow. shows. Supporting Pendulum, supporting, we supported uh, Mackie G the other night. Um, so this yeah. is really quick. It's really so elevated. Yeah, like it's, I think the first show we did was like, I think like August 2021 or something. And then, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's yeah. a slow building thing. And then like I met Mills um, <clears throat> via her dad, Nikki mm-hmm. Black Market, big, big shout oh, out to Nikki. Nikki, um, come on. And we just, like, I invited her on to a, a live stream one night and we just clicked. Like she's a lovely girl. She's the best, yeah, big up Mills. she's a lovely girl. She's got a really good energy and um, she's got a really good attitude for someone of her age, you know. And uh, she's very grounded, and I think Nikki has instilled that into her. You mm-hmm. know, like she's 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 like an old school person in a new in a new school <laughs> body, <laughs> like. And I, you know, me and her just have a, a, a chemistry. You know, we just really get get along, and like music wise, when it comes to drum and bass, because she only plays drum and bass, but like um, we we like the same tunes, mm-hmm. and you know, we have the same sort of vibe. So we we started doing stri- um, streams together. And we've done quite a few now. Mm. So then I invited her to come and play with One Eighty. And it sort of, yeah, it just works. And then, so there's um, MC Maddie V as well, who's also amazing. Oh, tight. Yeah, Come big on. shout out Maddie, uh, who I love. Um, Maddie, we've done like a few bits and bobs. Like she's done a hologram session with Fearless. Uh, back big in up the, Fearless. Yeah, big up oh, Fearless. Back in the lockdown. Um, uh-huh. And we've just done various shows together over the, you know, the last couple of years. Um, and then we we started doing Raver Tots together, the three of us, because the promoter just thought oh well, that would be cool putting you three together because I said to him look me and Mills are like playing these back to backs and then he was like I'm going to put Maddie with you so we we did like all of the Raver Tots festivals last summer and just that looked like a lot of fun it was well. a lot of fun I've got to send a big shout out to Mike from Raver Tots it looked fun they are like the most funnest events ever like honestly my favourite <laughs> <laughs> and like because you just get to go wild yeah you like we, I go wild anyway but it's extra because it's kids and parents. Keeping it extra. But they are just like, they just love it. They're just like. Yeah. <gasps> um, well, and, it inspires yeah. them to want to do it, you know, mm. and don't give up. Yeah, yeah no, that. definitely. And I get so many young girls coming up to me, like, I want to be a DJ. And so we started doing those, um, that together. And it just was such a hit, the three of us together. Mm. So I thought, right, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna bring them into the 180 thing. And then there's another DJ called Temper. Mm-hmm. Who is Baseman's niece? Yes, now this. Yeah, and she's uh, yes. doing some big stuff as well out there, and she's doing her thing. 
Um, so we're just a little collective at the moment. But there's some other girls around it as well who, who have played with us, who come in and out as well. But this is the main crew now. So... You know, we're, we're trying to shape this into something. Mm, very mm. good. See, that's a future yeah. right there, baby. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. We'll, see. we'll see what happens. We're just going to sort of like chip away. and, But it's just good vibes, man. Good, it's mm. good female unity and energy with some really talented, talented women, you know. Mm. So Excellent. watch the space for that. But apart from that, I've got my dogs. I've got my dogs. I've got my dogs. Mm -hmm. Love my dogs. How many dogs? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. That's a handful. I got a staffy and two sausage dogs. Names? Leo, Flo, and Perry. Perry's my original boy. Mm -hmm. He's 15 now. So. Mm. And yeah, running the empire, watching Fabio and Groove Rider take over the world. You know, the Outlook Orchestra is just like smashing it so left, right, good. and center, which, you know, as I said, I'm heavily involved in, and it's a very exciting project. So I'm excited to see where they go. You know, they're getting the credit that, you, that they deserve. thousand percent. For the absolute legends and innovators that they are. And I think, like, that was the only reason I ever got involved in their career. I never was, I never thought, I'm going to be a manager. It was, it was like, okay, you are absolute legends and pioneers and amazing and, you know, always pretty much always been up there, top of the game. But I just felt like there was something missing, like they didn't have as good enough management and there was a brand there that mm. yeah yeah you know what i mean that could yeah. be exploited more and, and 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 i think the main thing was i wanted to i wanted everyone to know like who who the fuck they are yeah. man and like what they've done for music not just drum and bass urban music everything yeah everything because without drum without that early jungle creation there's no grime there'd be no grime there'd be no garage no and they were like even like the the first black DJs to play house music yeah. in, in this country. Isn't that bonkers? It's mad. It's, it's, it's mad. Just, yeah. So I was just like, I want to I wanna let people know. And I think, obviously, because I've been going out with Fabio for so many years, like, I, I wanted to help. How many years is it now? 20 years this 20 year. 20 years. years in November. Congratulations. It's like, yeah, we, I think we haven't been, like, properly going out for 20 years, but we've been together sort of. 20 yeah, years. It's been a long time. Oh. So, um, <laughs> yeah, their project's really exciting. And, and you know, it just goes to show as well, like, never give up. And, like, you can you can reinvent yourself as many times as you like and still have exciting new things happening mm. all the way through your career mm. at any age. It's such you know a good I mean? sentiment to end on. At any never age. Never give you know, up, man. You know what I mean? Never give up. Never just, just keep innovating and keep it fresh and keep coming up with new ideas mm. and... Don't let anything get stale. Yeah. That's it. And, and they've also, always done that. And also, so. don't get in the way of yourself. No. <laughs> like, if you are the way you are and you are how you like to be, then be that. Mm. Right? So that that's that's it, really. But, yeah, the future's exciting. There's lots of things happening. And I'm just on this journey, you know, just, mm -hmm. like, being me. Being her and doing it well. And thank you so much doing for being... It, doing it, doing it, doing it right. <laughs> thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Yay! Charlotte Devaney and Big up, Keller, and thank you for having me. Charlotte Devaney. Devaney. <laughs> Devaney. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, check out the Hologram Sessions. Check out my music, Spotify. And um, thank you to everyone that supports me. Yeah. yeah, there you go from the lady herself. Lots more in store. Thank you so much for joining us. Killer Keller podcast out like in was out of fashion. You know the deal. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right. You stay in touch. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace.